Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So do you ever get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, the government doesn't always have your best interest at heart? Well, that seems to be the case because, well, now they're trying to ban body armor. Let's talk about what's going on and whether or not it's protected by the Second Amendment. This channel is proud to be sponsored by the USCCA, which is one of the best memberships you could ever have in your wallet. As a member, you get that self-defense liability insurance, which is priceless, and it's a 100% money back guarantee. Now, if you sign up with my link down below in the description box for a limited time, you can get this Otis handgun cleaning kit. This is a really nice cleaning kit. It's not one of the cheap ones. It's Otis. They make good quality stuff. Now, this is for all membership levels. Now, if you get a platinum or elite membership, they're going to throw in this massive range bag right here again not a cheap range bag by any means this is a really nice high quality range bag with the USCCA logo embroidered on top this is really cool molly webbing all over the place they're going to add that in for free with the platinum and elite level so definitely worth checking out check out the link down below thank you guys very much for watching let's get to it so the bill that we're going to be talking about today comes from the freedom loving and also caring about your safety state of California. Yep, California cares about your safety so much that they've decided to take away your only passive way of defending yourself. They want to make sure that you are not allowed to have body armor, so they introduced a bill to ban it. Now, they're not just banning it from everybody in California. That would be a little bit too much. So what they've decided to do is just ban it from you. The average person will not be able to buy, sell, or transfer body armor. But if you have a badge, you'll be able to get body armor, not a problem. Any state or local officer, if you work for security or something like that, you'll still be able to get it. But if you don't have a badge and you don't work for a government agency or a three letter agency, well, you're just gonna be out of luck. You're not gonna be able to protect yourself with this wearable form of self-defense. Now, I think it's really important first to discuss is this protected by the Second Amendment? So if this bill actually passes, it makes it through, and California has once again just relieved you of another form of protecting yourself, well, will it actually stand up in court? And the answer to that is no. So the Second Amendment was ratified in 1791. So we have to understand what arms meant in 1791. We have to understand what the founders were saying when they said that you have the right to keep and bear arms. Is body armor considered arms? Well, the best way to look at that is through the definitions of the time. What were the most popular definitions of arms at the time, and what did they actually use as a definition when they were writing our Second Amendment? Well, we can go ahead and we can look at it. As a matter of fact, Scalia even uh, mentions this in some of his Second Amendment uh, uh, rulings. So let's go ahead and just read here what arms means, and this will tell us whether or not body armor is protected by the Second Amendment. We should mention that it is in common use for lawful purposes. So Justice Scalia's majority opinion had this to say about what arms meant. The 18th century meaning of arms is no different from the meaning today. So that's, that's really important. What they meant by it back then is still what it means today. The 1773 edition of Samuel Johnson's Dictionary defined arms as weapons of offense or armor of defense. So in 1773, not long before our Constitution was written, we had that definition. That's the definition that was used to create our Second Amendment. Clearly states armor. But we just can't go off the one definition. We have to look at the legal definition around that same time period. So the legal definition from Timothy Cunningham's 1771 Legal Dictionary defines arms as anything that a man wears for his defense. Anything that a man wears for his defense, right there, right? Or takes into his hands or useth in wrath to cast at or strike another. So it basically says that arms not only does it apply to something that you would use in your hands for your own defense, but something that you would wear in your own defense as well. So now we have a definition on its own and a legal definition all referring to body armor as arms. That means that this right here is protected by the Second Amendment as well as what you would consider traditional arms. So you have to remember that whenever they try and ban body armor, this is constitutionally protected. 
So I love how California always says that they're doing these things for public safety. They're doing it for the public good. They're trying to reduce crime and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I have proof that this particular ban has nothing to do with public safety, nothing to do with crime. The proof is, is that it's already against the law. It's already illegal to use body armor in the commission of a crime. If you do that, they're going to add a special enhancement. You're going to get more time and it's an extra felony charge. I mean, there's a lot that gets added to it if you use something like this uh, while you do something bad. So that already exists. The law is already there. Whether or not they enforce that law, I have absolutely no idea. So why would you want to ban it from everybody else? Well, they just don't want you to have it. This right here is the most passive way you can have to protect yourself. It does absolutely nothing to nobody. You can wear something like this under your shirt. You can wear it over your shirt, whatever. It, it's just there to keep things from puncturing you. That's, that's all it's there for. It doesn't do anything to anybody else. Again, it's totally passive. I could wear it underneath the jacket. Nobody would even know I have it. And it can't do any harm to anybody else. So they're just simply taking away, for, you know, taking away another way for you to protect yourself. You know, and if they try and use public safety and everything else when they try and explain themselves about this, just remember, it's already trying to use one of these, uh, you know, to do something nefarious. You, you, it's already in the books. They just need to, to simply enforce that. But no, they're not going to. They're just going to go ahead and ban it. Like I said before, security is going to be able to keep it. Uh, military, law enforcement, um, you know, all these public agencies, even code enforcement officers under this new bill, code enforcement officers would be able to have it. Now, the specific bill is Assembly Bill 92. This is uh, the 23-24 session, so this is something that just came up. As a matter of fact, it was introduced on January 5th, so just about a month ago this was introduced. So we'll see where it goes from here. Obviously, it has to go through committee and it has to go through other stuff. I, I think it has a good chance of passing. They've tried to do this in the past and it didn't go through, so maybe there's a, a little bit of hope, but there is a good chance that it will pass and obviously the government will sign it because it goes along with whatever they want. And then we'll have to take it to court. And we know that we'll prevail in court, that we will win, but it's just a delay tactic. It's a, it's a time stall. You know, they enforce the law while it goes through the court system and now we end up years later waiting for some type of decision from the higher courts. So we'll see what happens with this one. I'll update you guys if it actually does show signs of movement. You know, it'll have to go from the assembly to the Senate and then up to the governor's desk and we'll keep a close eye on it. But uh, I'm telling you right now, since there seems to be some type of grandfather clause, even though I don't believe in grandfather clauses, they're just schemes, uh, apparently if you have it, you can keep it. That's at least for now until they decide to change their minds later on down the road. But if you already own it, at least... I guess, hang on to it. So uh, I wanted to make you guys aware of that because it's just another infringement on our rights from one of the states that absolutely loves to do that. I want to thank you all again very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.